Thank you to Admiral Moran for that kind introduction, but more importantly, thank you, sir, for your service to our country. I've got great news for everybody. I am the last speaker. It's great to be here with my great friend and colleague, Senator Jeff Sessions, to be with my former colleague from Montgomery, Lieutenant Governor Kay Ivey, to be with two of the greatest mayors in the United States of America, Mayor Todd Strange from Montgomery and Mayor Sandy Stimson from Mobile. And especially, I'm proud to be here with Mary Sessions, the sponsor of this great ship. Her spirit will be in this ship for its entire life. And it's a great honor for you, but it's also a great honor for us to have your spirit in that ship. Thank you, Mary. I want to mention one thing about Montgomery, very special to me. When Mayor Strange asked everybody here to stand up that is from Montgomery or wants to be from Montgomery, my wife Rebecca stood up. Because I went to Montgomery, like Senator Sessions did, and found a great woman. And through her eyes and knowing her friends and family there in Montgomery, I learned personally what a great city and what a great community Montgomery is. And it's not just because you have Maxwell Air Force Base there, but people in Montgomery are strongly patriotic. You love your country. And it's so special that we have so many of you here today as we commission a ship named after your great city. Thank you for being here. I believe you will find the ship that bears your name will live up to the reputation you have established over the years. The littoral combat ship program here at Austin Shipyard, as you just heard, employs over 4,000 people in direct jobs. It started out at 800 people, as Craig said, not too long ago. Also, has worked with more than 550 suppliers in Alabama over the life of the program and 1,500 suppliers across 41 different states. But I'm not a supporter of this ship just because it's built here in Alabama, although I am very proud that it is. I'm a supporter of this ship because it is a critical part of the future of our fleet. As Senator Sessions said, our fleet has shrunk to 276 ships. And in just a few moments, it's going to grow to 277. The Navy knows that the minimum we need is 308. But studies and the work we've done in the Armed Services Committee in the House has said that we need 350. We don't get to 308, much less 350, if we do not build the full complement of the littoral combat ships, including 26 to be built here in Mobile. So some people say, why do you fight so hard for these ships? Is it just because they build them in your home? I say, no, that, that's a good reason. I'm for these ships because these ships are critical to carrying out the mission of the United States Navy. The United States Navy projects force and deters aggression against our country. Just think about what's happened in recent days. Many of the sorties that have flown into Syria and Iraq are flown by jets off of United States Navy aircraft carriers into Syria and Iraq. Our Navy is performing an incredibly important function right now in the South China Sea. China says the South China Sea belongs to it. Over $5 trillion of trade flows through the South China Sea. Over half the world's population lives there. If China gets control of the South China Sea, we all lose. And the only way to push back against China as it seeks to do that is by having a strong and determined United States Navy. In just the past few days, the Iranian Navy has tried to harass U.S. Navy ships in the Straits of Hormuz. Well, I want the Iranian Navy to have that same feeling each one of us just had when those shots were fired off. That little nervousness in the pit of your stomach every time they see a United States Navy ship come up. And I predict pretty soon they'll see ships like this. And I guarantee you they'll have that nervousness in the pit of their stomach. And our good friends from Russia who've now decided to go back to the bad old days, we now find their Navy in places that they haven't been in decades. The only way to step back against Russia is to have a strong and determined United States Navy. 
It's not just our military actions. Our Navy responds to disasters all over the world. 80% of the world's population lives within 60 miles of the sea. So just think about it. The recent tsunamis in Japan and Indonesia, the earthquake in Haiti, the search and rescue following the crash of the Air Asia flight. Who responded to that? The United States Navy. We also keep the sea lanes of the world open, not just in the South China Sea, but over the entire world. 90% of world trade goes by sea. Nine trillion dollars is traded by sea each year. 40 million jobs in the United States are connected to sea trade. 95%, listen to this, 95% of all voice and data are being transferred under the ocean by cable, not up in the air. And it wouldn't take much for the Russians to go down there with these special little submarines they've got to clip those cables. Let me tell you something, you want to bring a lot of our daily lives to a real quick stop? Cut those cables. Who pushes back against that? The United States Navy. Just a couple of months ago, I got to go to the RIMPAC Naval Exercise. It's the largest naval exercise in the world. The United States Navy leads it. 25 other countries were participating. I got to see the awesomeness of our Navy cooperating with all these other navies. I got to go out on the USS Stennis, an aircraft carrier. Folks, if you want to understand the power of the United States, go on an aircraft carrier. The average age of a United States aircraft carrier of the seaman is 23. The average age on the flight deck is 21. And yet day after day after day after day, they are launching jets and recovering jets flawlessly. Day and night, good weather, bad weather, weekends and holidays. And those young sailors continue to do the job that you and I expect them to do without fail. And every time I meet those sailors, just like these sailors back here, it makes me proud. I also got to go on the sister ship to the Montgomery that we're going to commission in a moment here. Got to go on it at sea, flew on a helicopter, came in on the stern you see here, landed on it, spent several hours, I and eight other members of Congress. Got to go all over the ship and up on the bridge and they took it up to 38 knots. Now folks, the top speed of these ships is classified. I can't tell you how fast they go. But in South Alabama parlance, I can make you understand, they go real fast. You can barefoot ski behind one of these things. They let me drive it. They turn real quick. Now, a couple of things came out of that. The commander of the Pacific Command is a man named Admiral Harry Harris, very impressive guy. He said, Congressman, when I was a young Navy officer during the Cold War, we had to be worried about the Soviet Union's Corvettes, these small little ships that they had they put missiles on. We had to be worried about where are they? Well, now I get to have these littoral combat ships that I can put in different places around the Pacific with these harpoon missiles on them, and now the Chinese Navy's got to worry, where are they? I want them to be worried about where these are. I also got to see the C-RAM system that we put on. The C-RAM is, is the missile defense on it. Now here's the secret behind missile defense. You don't want a missile to hit your ship. So the C-RAM detects the missile in the air and then shoots a, a projectile at it and explodes in the air. So the missile never gets to the ship. So the commander of the ship was telling us about that and one of the congressmen with me turned to him and said, yeah, but what about a torpedo? He got a big smile on his face and he said, oh, I can outrun a torpedo. That's quite a ship. When I returned back home after that Navy exercise, and I went to sleep, put my head on my pillow, went to sleep soundly, like you and I do every night, I got to do that because the United States Navy is patrolling the waters of the world, keeping you and me safe. And making this ship and her sister ships is a very important part of the United States Navy carrying out that mission to keep you and me safe, to keep you and me free. So, I make no apologies at all about the efforts that Senator Sessions, Senator Shelby, and so many other people in Congress are making to make sure that we keep building these ships for years and years to come. To Commander Straw and all those who will serve on this fine ship, I wish you fair winds and following seas. God bless you. 
God bless the great shipyard workers at Austin Shipyard that made this ship. And God bless the United States of America.